Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, this is Scrapman, bringing you another episode of Scrap Mechanic, and we are doing speed builds with the Discord. If you're unfamiliar, speed builds is where I take suggestions during my recording on what to build live in the moment. I interpret your ideas in whatever funny or interesting or entertaining ways I can and see what comes out of it. If you're not familiar with this series, there's a whole playlist of it on the channel, and if you want to participate in future ones, make sure that you're subscribed and that you join the Discord with the link down in the description below. Anyway, let's jump over to the Discord and see what kind of suggestions have been rolling in. Ivan Final Form here asked for a waving American flag, and this actually, this is, this is a fun fact here. The very, very first thing on my channel ever, I think, was a waving American flag. You know what, there's an easy way to find this out. I, this, would be a, this would be kind of like a fun fact and like a nostalgia blast of the past. Who is here from the beginning? If I go to oldest videos, you can see my very first upload doesn't even have a custom thumbnail two years ago. There you have it. Literally the very first thing anyone has seen on my channel is an American flag. So let's actually take this into speed build form. Let's make it bigger, better, so we're gonna scale this thing up and we're gonna make it go faster and just see what happens. And also, uh, I'll show you guys how it was done in the first place. So it's really not that hard. All you gotta do is just uh, keep making things on bearings kind of like this. Then put just another row on a bearing. Oop, that one went too high. And you just keep this up until you're satisfied with where your flag goes. So I'm obviously making this flag a lot bigger. So this is gonna have, this is gonna have to have a decent amount of rows. So now all we have to do is just extend this part down and put a controller on it. And all you need to make this flag wave is a single controller. You do not need to hook all the bearings up to make the waving effect. That's actually the beauty of this. It's way simpler than it looks. You don't have to program your own wave in. If you just set this very first bearing, all right, it doesn't have exactly the same amount of stripes that the normal American flag has, but it's got stripes and uh, this is this is how it's gonna look. Okay, so now we gotta set our controller. So we're gonna have it start at negative five degrees and then we're gonna have it go 10 degrees to the right and then we're gonna have it go 10 degrees to the left. All right, so now we should have a waving flag when we turn this on. Let's see how it goes. Okay, five or 10 degrees is not enough. So let's go negative 20. Let's see if this makes it look any better. Ah, yes, there we go. So now we have a decently waving American flag. Now the question is, what happens if you just start making things go a little crazy? And go. Oh, no. Wait, what? We're gonna have to put this thing back on a lip. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, America. I don't know what I've done. We should be able to weld this back here. Please don't kill me. All right, and go. We're at like 90 degrees now. Look at that. That's actually amazing. We actually should go back 170 degrees. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it got glitched again. It got... It looks more like a fish than a, uh, than a flag now, doesn't it? You know, what happens if we start just... Oh, 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 oh. That would, that's a great way to lag the world, isn't it? Okay, we're gonna have to move on to the next creation, but I gotta clean this mess up first. I'll see you in a second. All right, Billy Bob Jo3 here asked for a cow jumping over the booth. This actually sounds kind of fun, and I think we could do this without taking too much time. I hope. Let's get to it. Okay, so first we're gonna need to build a cow, and we have to give it a jumping mechanism. And the most obvious way to do a jumping mechanism, I think, is pistons. Where are the pistons? Here are the pistons. So we're gonna give this thing double piston legs. This is gonna be a really, really derpy looking cow, by the way. And this cow is also gonna have wheels because if it's gonna jump over the moon, it needs to be able to go get some momentum first. This cow doesn't even have a center point. I was gonna put a, a waving tail on it, but you know what, its tail is gonna be off center. So you're just gonna have to deal with that. <laughs> All right, here's our cow. Is this the most amazing cow you've ever seen? So this cow is gonna run at the moon and when it gets to the moon, it's gonna jump. So now we actually have to build a moon. And I've determined we are building a cube moon. You thought the earth being flat was a crazy idea. How about a cube moon? Where's all the cube moon conspiracies? 
All right, you think the cow can jump over that moon? I hope it can. Did I even make it tall enough? I hope I made it tall enough. All right, so when I press this button, this cow is gonna run, hopefully run at the moon and jump over it by the time it gets to it. Here we go. Three, two, one, go cow, go. You failed me. You failed me, cow. All right, the problem is our sensor was, I think, too high. This should now give us some moon jumping cow capabilities. Three, two, one, go. Oh, it did it. It did an almost backflip over the moon. That totally worked. We got to do this again. We got to do that again. We, we have to do that. I can't believe that it actually worked as well as it did. All right, and go. Oh. <laughs> it almost did a full front flip. I think, uh, I think actually a slower engine might help. Let's try it with a slower engine. Because I think if it goes too fast, it doesn't have enough time to react to jumping. Because we only have a 20 block radius on these sensors here. That was it right there. That was a cow jumping over the moon. Did you guys, uh, did you guys expect this to actually work? Did you guys expect this to actually work an automatic cow jumping over the moon? Oh, no way! No, come back! I need you! I need you for a thumbnail! Come back! The cow jumped over the moon! Look at his tail wagging! It jumped over the moon and it keeps going! This is- Alright, I'm gonna say that was a wild, a wild success there. I dare say that we are probably the first ever to build a cow jumping over a moon in Scrap Mechanic. But I'm just gonna leave these guys here. <laughs> cow jumping on the moon? All right, we're just gonna leave them there. Let's go over to see what the next suggestion is gonna be. All right, Joe Apocalypse here asks for a fish that floats erratically. So I'm gonna interpret this in uh, whatever way I see fit, and we're gonna make a fish that floats erratically. I think we can do this. All right, now you didn't actually say anything about floating in water, so we're actually gonna use helium to make this fish. So we're gonna need some helium blocks. We're gonna need some drag blocks, and we're gonna need a helium activator. So now we got to build our fish out of helium and I'm actually going to do a kind of subtractive building method here. We're going to have, we're going to carve our fish out of this block because I think that'll actually be easier than building the individual parts. All right, and here is our helium fish and uh, we're going to use the helium activator as the eye. And now we just got to put a bunch of drag blocks on this thing and I think this should make it... Uh, float erratically was that was that the request a a fish that floats erratically so let's see if this works i think that if if my experiments with the with the helium mod have uh, told me anything is that this this should work although i haven't built it something to this scale we'll find out all right let's see if this works okay that's not floating erratically that's actually floating the opposite of erratically all right let's see if this one works any better oh Oh, oh, okay, that's weird. That's a little weird. All right, we're gonna put a lot more helium activator blocks on this thing. Like, a lot more. And I'm just gonna save this in case, because we're probably gonna lose it. All right, fish that floats erratically, go! Oh, oh, okay. Oh, what? All right, we're going to spawn another one of these things in. Let's see what happens with just a singular drag block on this. Oh. <laughs> these things aren't floating as radically as I thought. Because here, here, here's what I thought was going to happen. If we create something like this and we put a bunch of drag blocks on it like this, that floats erratically. What? <laughs> That's what I was hoping. Maybe, maybe we have to have it sideways. Let's put it sideways. So he, oh, how are we gonna put it side? Cause in order to put it sideways, I have to take it off the lift. We actually have to fence this thing in here. Hold on. We're actually creating a cage for the fish in order to do this. All right, and letting it go. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That, that, that fish wants out of this cage. Okay, so we're gonna take the weld tool and we're gonna weld it uh, like that. And now let's see if it floats any more erratically. Go, oh, okay. You know, it's harder to create an erratically floating fish than I thought it was gonna be. But I at least say it's erratic enough that uh, we lost control. We definitely lost control of these things. E even with the cage, it was still kind of erratic. So I'm gonna say mission semi-successful. Not a complete success, but semi-success. All right, let's get on to the next suggestion. 
All right, Crazy Ashton here asked for a very, very strange, very strange suggestion. I don't know where you guys get some of these ideas, but we're going to build a road sign that walks towards you. And I think I have a funny image in my head and I kind of want to see this come to life. All right, so first I have to build, I'm going to build the legs of the road sign that walks towards us. All right, I got the base and this should be a walking base. We just have to attach a switch to this thing and see if it actually works. We have to attach the switch to the controller to see if it actually... I forgot to... I forgot to make the legs, uh, synchronized with each other. That was my bad. Alright, now this should work. Okay, it's too fast. It's too fast. It's working upside down. Too fast, though. Too fast. Let's go ahead and do it at slower speed. Oh, boy. This is not even... A six-legged walker would have been more efficient, I think. I'm gonna say this is working good enough. Now we need to make it an actual road sign. Here we go. So this is what I think is funny. It's a stop sign. Oh, is it gonna work? <laughs> it's a walking stop sign. So it's kind of ironic to me that the stop sign itself is moving. But it's kind of like a stop in the name of the law. It's like a robot that's trying to tell you to just stop. But it's not very effective because... It can't even stop itself, so... It's a little bit scary looking. Like, it... It's kind of, like, off-putting. Something about it, the way... The way that it actually, like, waves back and forth is a little bit off-putting for some reason. So I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna let that walking stop sign go and do what it's gonna... It's gonna tell someone to stop. It just... Just hasn't found the right person yet. Run along, little stop sign. Run along. All right, next suggestion. All right, Sean Tank 36 here asked for a backflipping laptop. Now, this sounds complicated, but I have experience in backflipping technology, believe it or not. Not even just toasters, but cell phones as well. A long, long time ago, I made a video about different types of cell phones, and one of them was a, a flipping cell phone that would actually land back upright. Now that was really tough to make, but a backflipping laptop I think might be doable. Let's do this. Okay, first things first, we need the base of the laptop. So let's go with, um, I guess this. Then we need the laptop screen. I guess we'll put that just like that. All right, so we have our laptop here and this laptop, this laptop has unfortunately blue screened, as you can see here. So uh, this, no, no, matter, no matter how many keys that we press here, it just doesn't seem to be working. Even if we do like the whole control alt delete thing, it's just, it's not working. So we're gonna have to, um, we're gonna have to make a backflip. I mean, that's really the only way to solve the blue screen of death. I don't know if you guys ever tried this, but if you actually make your laptop backflip, it solves the blue screen. So first we have to program it though. You have to, even though it's blue screen, you can still program your laptop. If you go into the back of your laptop here, you'll notice that there's a controller and you can actually set your programs in here. Just make sure that your controller is hooked up to um, all these peripherals. So first, your laptop is gonna close by 90 degrees. So after it closes by 90 degrees, you then have to lock your laptop with these. Then you have to make your laptop open by 90 degrees. And then you have to unlock it. See, that that's, that's the key, is you have to open it before you unlock it, and that's what makes it backflip. So we should now have a backflipping laptop. Oh. This laptop is actually the, the virus got so bad that the blue screen actually bled through to the back of the the back of the screen. So don't don't ask questions about that. Okay, let's see if this laptop actually backflips. This is completely untested. First voyage. I haven't even tested if the programming is actually correct and my bearings are right. Oh, we have an unpainted thing here. And actually, I forgot the paint. Forgot to paint this part here as well. All right, let's see if it works. Three, two, one, go. Oh, I missed. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Okay. Okay, wait, what? Oh, okay. I'm getting distracted by the thing floating around over there. Oh, eh, oh, okay. All right, not, not quite. That's okay. We just have to adjust that, that as we just have to adjust our programming to go a little bit faster. All right, this should now backflip. Okay, all right, you know what, you know, it, it's, we're almost there, we're almost there, all we have to do is just make it open up, open up just a little bit more. All right, so now this should work, we just had to open it up a little, little bit steeper of a degree, because 90 degrees, it doesn't make any sense, you have to have it angled back just a little bit. 
There it is. There it is. Backflipping laptop right there. Wait, why doesn't it? It should be looping. It should be repeating. All right, I have it, I have it set up to repeat, but for some reason, the repeat function just isn't working. I think it gets, it, it gets stuck. I think it gets stuck into itself. But we've done a single backflip, and I'm going to call that mission success on the backflipping laptop. Now, I think I have time for one more, one more quick build. Let's see what it's going to be. Although, to, to admit, I got to admit, it's going to be hard to beat a backflipping laptop. No, we, we just got, we got to watch it one more time, because this thing is just, it, it's, it's reliable. Like, it works. You get a backflip every time. Okay, back to the Discord. All right, 700 Blue here is asking for a ball and chain that swings. So I'm going to take this a little bit of a step further, and I'm going to make a floating ball and chain that swings that we drag behind a car. So it still counts as a ball and chain that swings, right? I hope. I mean, it should be better. But just, just a beefier version of your idea. <laughs> So I'm actually going to use a pre-built car here. The ball and chain that swings is going to be the thing that we're going to speed build. So first we need a chain to put a ball on. And to make a chain, we're actually going to use these pipe pieces here. And we are going to need lots of bearings. All right, I think that's a long enough chain for now. We don't want to add too many bearings, otherwise it might get a little bit laggy. So now we're going to have to go back to our helium blocks. Because we're going to make this a floating ball and chain that swings. So now we got to make a ball out of helium. Ball-shaped things are always kind of tough for me to build in scrap mechanic, but I'm gonna do my best. Especially a spherical ball-shaped object, but we'll see how this goes. All right, I think we have ourselves a ball here. I think it resembles a ball at least, and unfortunately the helium doesn't really paint very well, so a ball and chain is like typically black colored, but uh, this is as black as we're gonna get this thing to look. So there we go. Now we just gotta weld this thing to our chain here, just like that. And if we put a helium activator on it, I'm thinking it should float, right? Oh boy. Oh boy, look at that. That's pretty good. Actually, I wonder if we put a couple more helium activators on this, could we lift our car up at all? I just put four more helium activators on it. Let's see how... Whoa! Oh, boy. Okay, that's... Yeah, I don't think that thing's gonna lift this car no matter how many helium activators we got on it. But now, we've got a ball and chain. It's basically a balloon behind our car. You know what? I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take some of the helium activators off of it because it's too strong right now, and uh, it doesn't swing as much as I want it to. I want it to swing side to side. All right, there we go. That should be better. This should swing a little bit more now as we drive around. Oh, look at that. Look at it get dragged behind us. <gasps> Let's put a drag block on it. Oh, 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 oh. If we put a drag block on it, that actually might help it get dragged behind us. Hence the name drag block, right? This is kind of like an interesting physics experiment to see how this actually... Look at that. That actually looks kind of, kind of creepy. Like almost like it's just... It's like, it's like one of the Mario ghosts. The boo just following me. All right, does it, does it, does it actually swing though? If we like turn, oh, that's just weird. That is just really, really weird. The, the chain, oh, I didn't actually put side to side ability in this chain. This chain actually only goes up and down. So you know what we have to do? Here's what we have to do. We have to weld this chain on sideways. So I'm going to be careful not to lose. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. All right, so let's actually make it so that this chain Oh, that's exactly the same way. My bad. All right, there we go. So now this chain's actually gonna float, but it'll, it'll swing side to side because that's what you asked for, right? Whoops. All right, so here we go. Uh oh, oh, okay. Ball and chain. Ball and chain that swings side to side, except I think we need to get rid of the drag block. The drag block is preventing the swinging from happening. Oh, that's better. That, oh, that's much better. That This is the lightest ball and chain you'll ever see. It's literally made of helium. This is actually kind of cool. It almost looks like a weapon that I, that's like purposefully put there to actually be something useful. But this is not useful in any way whatsoever. It just swings from side to side. All right, well, I'm going to call this mission accomplished. You asked for a ball and chain that swings side to side. I went up to you with a helium-based ball and chain attached to a car that swings side to side. And I think this is where we're going to end the episode off here. Let me know which one of these creations, which one of these speed builds was your favorite. Comment down below. And uh, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future episodes like this. And make sure that you uh, join the Discord if you want to have a chance to participate in future episodes like this. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>